few of you let me know about this church fire thing here um, in the comments section one of my videos I forget which one it was but uh, some interesting things here it's not just this church building here in Massachusetts that burned uh, there's a lot of them that are burning um, Lord has been doing this for years burning these churches to the ground with lightning strikes um, and I know somebody would say well it's just that the steeples up high and they don't have light or lightning rods on there that's what causes it and whatever else uh, well, if you look at things with just conventional thinking, well, sure, you can think that way. But uh, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe the Lord does things, and if he's truly protecting something, it will not be allowed to burn down. If this work of this council be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. The book of Acts talks about that. So I believe in things supernaturally. So the fact that these church buildings are burning to the ground shows that there's no mention of church buildings in the New Testament. It's a completely foreign thing to the pages of Scripture. All right? And I'll show you some Scriptures on that here in just a little bit. But uh, let's watch some of these videos here. Pretty incredible stuff. May have sparked this awful church fire in Spencer. There goes the steeple. Took several fire crews from around. And this fire may have started with a lightning strike. Fire engulfed a centuries old church. Now take a look. According to the church's website, the congregation dates back to 1743. If you that is 280 years ago. A lot of rich history in this one church right here. Officials think the church was struck by lightning. In a world rife with cynicism and unbelief. Instances of divine intervention often go unnoticed or are written off as mere coincidences. But when a 160-year-old church burns to the ground following a lightning strike, mere moments after its pastor openly rejects the divine origin of the Bible, one can't help but see a higher power at work. The First Congregational Church of Spencer, Massachusetts, a long-standing beacon of faith with a history dating back to 1743, was suddenly struck by a bolt of lightning which set the entire building aflame, decimating it completely. This shocking event occurred in the middle of the day, a fiery sword cutting through the skies above the church and reducing it to smoldering ruins. The church's tower, proudly standing since 1863, collapsed under the fierce blaze, leaving the onlookers in a state of horror and disbelief. Many believe this is the handwriting of God on the wall, especially after the pastor made mocking remarks about the Bible. How do we look at this stuff here? Um, you know, why are all those contradictions in the Bible? Well, because it was written down by the people over a period of about 1,500 years. So given, given that, uh, people are going to have different kinds of things. And, and I am one who does not believe it was dictated by God. His claim strikes out. Okay. And <clears throat> the fact is, he's actually being honest. All the other pastors in church buildings, um, they're not honest about it. I've never met any pastor that believed, truly believed that their Bible was perfect. The King James Bible was perfect and without error. I shouldn't say I've never never met any because I've met, I haven't met them all. But the whole point is there could be one out there or something like that. They just don't believe what the Bible says about, you know, staying away from church buildings and things. Um, the Bible doesn't say anything about build a church and, and have people save and loss coming to it and Whatever else, the Bible does condemn the thing of uh, having a building and saying it's of God or something like this. Um, let me show you the scripture on that just in case I get somebody saying, oh, it doesn't say that. Yes, it does. Um, Acts chapter 7. Stephen on trial here. You go down through. Um, uh, trying to think of where the verse is. Okay. Verse 47, but Solomon built him an house, howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as says, saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? All right. God didn't say to build a church building. Well, this is the house of God. No, it isn't. Nobody in the New Testament built church buildings. But see, if you actually talk to these guys, they're standing up there reading out of Bibles. They'll get nice little moral things out of it, but they don't believe it's perfect. Um, I mean, ask any pastor that you know of, does the Bible that you preach out of, is it perfect without error? If they're honest, they'll say no. It has errors. All Bibles have errors. They're all just translations. Only the original autographs were truly inspired and error-free, and nobody's ever seen those, including in the first century, right? 
Nobody in the first century, the Apostle Paul, never saw the original autographs of Genesis. So there was never a book on earth that had all the original autographs in one volume or scroll or whatever else. So you have people that are really just atheists. Well, no, I believe in God, uh, but you reject the book that talks about God. And you wouldn't know who God is without the book, without the Bible. But there you have it, right there. But uh, here's another one. This is six days ago. Salisbury Ministry Camp is smoldering tonight after a lightning strike caused it to go up in flames. The fire starting around 4.30 this afternoon. Crews spending hours at the scene. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but the campus is seriously damaged. But to some members of the community, it also represented so much more than just a building. WCNC Charlotte's Jesse Pierre spoke to people in the community. who. Let me just say this real quick, too. One of the big things that people will say to me, church building people, they'll say, it's just a building, brother. We know it's the people, the people that's the church. It's just a building. And yet when it goes up in a fire or whatever, oh, no, it's such a, it's so much more than just a building. It's, oh, yeah. Don't run in church. Wear your best clothes to church and all this stuff. They worship the building. It's an idol. Of course they do. Our church is better than that church over there. And we shared more about what the ministry meant to them. A staple in the community. Power Cross Ministries Salisbury Campus up in flames Sunday afternoon. It's just hard to believe such history is going up in flames that would, you know, that it might not can be repaired now. Brenda Laughlin says she is heartbroken to see the building where she once walked the halls back in the 1950s destroyed. I went from to the school from first to uh, seventh grade here, and my dad was born in 1900, and, and he went to school here. A lot of family history. Neighbors say they were rattled by the sound of the thunder, and fire officials say a lightning strike caused the fire. Heard and felt it, uh, looked over, saw sparks shoot up out of the roof somewhere, and then uh, immediately the roof started smoldering, and there was a little bit of a fire coming out of the gutter, so I called 911. Fire Marshal Terry Smith says the building is over 85 years old, and fires in older structures like these are hard to put out. Fire is confined in the attic and the roof area, very hard to get to, and the only way we can get to them was with our aerial devices. Smith says the damage is pretty intense, and the building, a former school, a former administrative building, and now home to a mentorship and ministry program for boys, appears to be a total loss. It's just devastating. It's a tough loss for the ministry, but leaning on faith, the organization vows to rebuild, saying in a Facebook post, a little fire won't stop them from serving their community. Mm -hmm. NLT. All right. New Living Translation. They're not even Bible-believing Christians. But that won't stop them because they have a good insurance policy, I'm sure. Uh, here we go again. Another one. This is a, a totally different building. Six years ago, getting struck by lightning. You'll see it hit right here. Watch. It lit up the sky for less than a second, shooting brick and wood more than 30 feet away from Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. I knew that, that the wind obviously didn't do that, and that it obviously had to be a lightning strike, so that's when we started sort of inspecting what, was, what had happened here. Pastor Dan Rosser says the lightning blew holes in the roof and in the side of the building and fried electrical wiring inside the church, putting computers, phones, the elevator, and a list of equipment in the sanctuary out of order. We're looking at well over $25,000, $30,000. After the bolt hit the building and not the church's lightning rod, Rosser is definitely thankful. The fact that we got struck by lightning and had this kind of physical, visible damage, and to be able to see that there was no fire that was the result of that. So we're just very grateful for that fact that God protected us in that way. And as he looked over... Did God send the lightning? Well, it's Mother Nature, I guess, right? For the damage Friday morning, video of the strike started showing up on Facebook. So one of my members literally texted me and had seen the picture of the strike on Facebook. And that was the first time I saw the picture of the strike. It came from across the street at Hayes Manufacturing, where security cameras are recording 24-7. You can see the sparks coming down. David Hayes curiously started watching the video Friday to see how strong the overnight storms had been. Then he saw the flash of light. 
and I slowed it down and finally call it exactly the right moment and then I saw the lightning and I was like oh my god it struck the church. Hayes also amazed he says the church didn't catch fire and its pastor wants to believe lightning truly does not strike twice. I mean you never know uh, we're, we're certainly hoping that we don't get struck again. Certainly hoping that, that they don't get struck again. Why don't you consider the scriptures? Maybe we shouldn't be doing this thing of a church building. Maybe there's some problems here. And these church buildings, brethren, anybody out there, put it in the comments down below. You know, if you've been to church buildings throughout your life, there's so much covering up of sin. It's ridiculous. So here's another one. Church steeple uh, engulfed in flames after lightning strike one month ago. There's another one. Now, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Lisa Bell. Lightning struck the steeple of New Bethel AME Church in Ormond Beach around 4.30 this afternoon. We have team coverage tonight. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells will pinpoint the lightning strikes from this afternoon and tell us about more strong storms on the way for tomorrow. But we begin with New Six's Treasure Roberts live in Ormond Beach tonight with the latest on that strike. Treasure. Treasure as a first name. No. <laughs> Nowadays it could be a man with the name treasure, but I have no idea. Yeah, Lisa, the senior pastor here tells us about $100,000 in damage was done here. You can see this broken glass right here. Well, that actually came from the front door of the church, which is now boarded up. And on top of all of that, up top on the roof, the steeple was damaged by a fire that broke out. The pastor says if the insurance company doesn't cover all of this, they're definitely going to need some help. Not now, Jesus. It was My heart was beeping. I was crying. Floyd Narcisse, the senior pastor of the historic New Bethel AME Church, was thrown into a panic Monday afternoon. While teaching at a nearby high school, he answered an unexpected call. I got the call. Standing out my church was on fire. My church was on fire? Hmm. I thought that Jesus Christ was the head of the church. I don't know. What do I know? I'm just a dummy on YouTube. I was in shock. Narcisse rushed over after first responders told him a lightning bolt struck the church. It caused the steeple atop the 139-year-old Ormond Beach church to burst into flames. The cross now lies on the roof. And inside the fellowship hall, there's tile damage and leaking water. There's a lot of destruction inside, and it's, it's sad, but I'm blessed because it could have been worse. Fortunately, no one was inside when the fire started. There was a big flash that happened. Jason Leslie, an Ormond Beach resident, believes he drove by the church the moment lightning hit. But at the time, he thought it nearly struck his car. So my vehicle actually, like, did a little shake and, like, almost like kind of like an earthquake feeling. Minutes later, he got a call alerting him the church was on fire. When I told my brother-in-law that I think I almost got struck by lightning and he goes no I think it struck the church. The church will rebuild this steeple for the second time. In 2016 Hurricane Matthew ripped it off the historic building. It was replaced with material that could withstand strong wind. This church has a small congregation and mending the building won't be cheap. We need all your help we can help. All your help if you can help us. The pastor says they may not be able to have church here on Sunday, so at this point they're looking for a place to worship. In Volusia County... Well, I don't know, maybe you could worship at home like they did in the New Testament if it's a small congregation. But you see, they have to have a building. People worship the building. Don't tell me that they don't. This one's actually up in northern Maine above us, and um, I think I, I remember this one. Somebody sent me this one years ago. It was eight years ago. And uh, we had done a video where we were driving up through there, and I, we, uh, I think, showed this on one of our videos. And shortly after it, this happened. Yeah. It's more fun than you ever thought. Yeah, because people can come in. <laughs> Do we have a Yeah, we do. Yeah. Holy 
I got that. Six, the grand dollar this one. So <laughs> I had to put that one in there. Another one, Mississippi Church Catches Fire After Lightning Strike. You can see that one. I won't bother playing the video of it. Um, here's one in Australia. Australian church burning after lightning strike. Um, another one, fire ups during service at Greeley Church after reported lightning strike. Play a little bit of this. And we begin tonight at the church you see in these photos. Last night, lightning hit during the middle of service, sparking a fire and causing significant damage. Church members say this is only a setback. They have every intention of rebuilding. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez is live in Greeley. Well, the, the damage, Ivan, is clearly visible. Clearly visible, and people stood outside the church today for hours just looking at all that damage. Those who were inside last night tell me they were scared when a bolt of lightning came in through the roof. Members of this Greeley church say more than 100 people were in the middle of a service when they believe a bolt of lightning struck part of the church's roof. The lightning was so bright, neighbors who live in the area also reported seeing it. The windows flashed, like you, a big flash came in through our windows, and I was like, that was lightning hit, and I swear it was like two minutes later, another flash came in, and, and next thing we know, ambulances started coming. Moments later, church members say parts of the building caught fire, and they quickly escaped before anyone was hurt. Greeley Fire Department says they responded just after 8 and began pounding the church with water to extinguish the flames. You know, as a church, if... Uh, a church could, be, could uh, benefit from the washing of water by the word. Get some scripture in there and say, you know what? You don't need a big, huge building like this. You don't need to worship in some place. It's costing people lots of money, and you're putting all your money into this thing. It's just useless. You're not doing anything to change the world or get the gospel to people or have a changed life and all the other things that the New Testament clearly presents. It's not just the building. It's the people. They all say that. It's not just the building. It's the people. Then you don't need the building. Do it the way that they did it in the New Testament. Oh, well, you know, we can't really do it that way anymore. Yeah. And what we do, we'll keep doing, because th that didn't change just because there was a fire. Hours after the destruction, people gathered outside to look at the damage. Part of the church's roof is now caved in, and the windows are boarded up. A drastic difference from the church they all recognize and call home. Do you ever think of what these uh, church buildings are going to look like by the end of the time of Jacob's Trouble? You ever think about that? I have. When we arrived this morning, all the church members who we spoke with say they did not want to talk on camera because their pastor advised them against it. We can now confirm, thanks to Greeley Fire, that the fire was caused because of lightning. Ivan Greeley, Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. All right, thank you, Ivan, very much. Okay, there's that one. No doubt. Our Team 7 coverage continues tonight in Roseville, where it's believed lightning sparked the flames that ripped through this church. Let's get right to 7 Action News reporter Jane Park. Jane, what's the scene like there now? Well, Heather, right now, crews are still out here. They've been out here since 6 o'clock, and for several hours, they had to contend with rain and wind to put out the flames. But now they're putting out some hot spots. If you take a look behind me, that fire, neighbors and witnesses say, was sparked by a lightning strike. Now, the official cause has not been released yet. What is clear, though, is that this storm was strong and fast. The sights and sounds of a midsummer storm that interrupted a hazy, humid Sunday afternoon in Macomb County. You couldn't go through the water or you would get stuck. Drivers steadily made their way on waterlogged roads. Some chose to wait for the torrential rains and strong winds to pass. The hail, everything, you know, the lightning, it was unbelievable. I haven't seen that in a long time. All of a sudden you just hear with the hail on the thing and hail was like this big. Like all the power shut off and the skies like were turning green, so I got scared. In Roseville, stunned neighbors looked on as this ominous storm cloud rolled over them. As just below, fire crews worked quickly to put out flames at this well-known church near Gratiot and Fraso. We got a phone call that uh, the lightning struck the church, and um, so the minute we heard the news, we came straight out here and wanted to see it for myself. 
As investigators work to confirm if lightning is to blame, the Roseville Fire Department is calling in extra help tonight to deal with downed power lines and scattered debris, the aftermath of these quick moving storms. Well, right now, uh, crews again are still working to put out some hot spots. They are working to uh, find the official cause. They have a long night ahead of them. We're now live in Roseville, Jane Park, 7 Action News. All right, thank you. So there you go. All right, now we have another one here. Lightning strike starts fire, destroys church. Five alarm church fire. This is 15 years ago. This is going way back. An historic church went up in flames after a lightning strike set off a five alarm fire. Good evening, everyone. For years, the first mile out of Free Will Baptist Church has survived the West Baltimore community and served the community as well. But today, all neighbors and parishioners could do was just to stand back and watch in horror as the fire tore their house of worship apart in a five alarm blaze. It injured three city firefighters as well. 11 News reporter Lowell Melser is at the scene in West Baltimore. He joins us live with the very latest. Lowell. At this hour, five alarms worth of equipment and firefighters remain here on the scene in the 800 block of West Saratoga Street. But it looks like, just taking a look behind me here, that they have a pretty good grip on this fire as they're climbing up those ladders to assess the damage, certainly better than what we saw about an hour ago. But the video that everyone is talking about is when the church's steeple collapsed, apparently injuring three firefighters. The fire broke out at around 3 o'clock after witnesses say fire and fire officials confirmed that lightning struck the steeple of the first. First Mount Olive Free Will Baptist Church. The fire quickly spread throughout the church and an adjacent administrative building. Because of the intensity of the fire, firefighters had to use an external approach using hoses attached to ladder trucks, sending thousands of gallons of water on top of the church. We also understand that a number of homes and a nursing center had to be evacuated because of the smoke, but no civilians were injured. A moment ago, Chief William Goodwin and Mayor Sheila Dixon called a news conference to talk about the fire. The chief explained more about that steeple collapse. Once the fire involves the steeple, pretty much uh, is a total loss of the building, and it's, it's held true to this time again. Our eff efforts of our people when they first got here to try to contain it, immediately there was a partial collapse of the steeple itself, and we had three firefighters injured, not extremely seriously, but then we had to back out and do an exterior operation. And here's one last live look at the scene from Sky Team 11. Just to recap, the fire started at around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Firefighters believe that it was caused by lightning. Three firefighters were injured, but we understand that their injuries are minor. One final note, fire officials tell me that the 100-plus-year-old church is a total loss. We're live in West Baltimore tonight. I'm Lowell Melser, WVAL, TV 11. All church buildings are total losses. All right, and another one. This is four years ago, historic church in Massachusetts. If you believe in God, you know, truly believe in the Lord, why isn't God protecting these church folks? They're such great places. God can protect them. We've seen the miraculous power of the Lord protecting us in numerous situations. He's not protecting these church buildings. We're not of God, that's why. All right. Uh, Philadelphia Church, right here. Watch this one. Talk about a one in a million shot, a lightning strike at a church. I'm Jason Martinez, and the church is damaged, but most importantly, nobody was injured. Witnesses are calling it a miracle. Ellen Kaloje reports. Some people believe what happened at this church at Edgemont and Venango was a true miracle because they believe when lightning apparently struck the steeple, a higher power might have been watching over them. Might have been? <laughs> See, church buildings are social clubs. That's all that they are. All right. Get back to that here in a minute. Christian across the street called and said, You're, the church is on fire. I saw, like, lightning. And then you heard the loud, it sounded like an explosion. Parishioners of Grace Episcopal Church could not believe their eyes when they say lightning struck the steeple on top of their beloved building. Nobody was inside, everybody. Beloved building. It's an idol. 
is safe, thank God. And that's really what matters. Buildings are buildings. Um, we can replace buildings, we can't replace people, so thank God for that. But even though no one was hurt, there is significant damage, and it's a real blow to the 65 parishioners who call this church home. It's extremely devastating, like my heart's broke that, you know, to see it. It's like, it's my kid, you know, my baby, and then when you come and you see it engulfed, it's like, uh, you know, everything's just running through you. God it's like my kid, my baby. Well, they don't worship the building. They just go there, you know. Uh -huh. Love the people who put that steeple and cross up 100 years ago. but they God love the people that put the steeple and cross up 100 years ago. I don't remember reading that in there. Put up the steeple and the cross. Make sure you have it up. They never put a lightning rod on it. So um, insurance will rectify that hopefully in the next couple of months. Even though it was an act of God, God is our boss. So guess what? We're covered. <laughs> so whatever's wrong will be fixed and replaced. Now the pastor says. And how will it be fixed and replaced? There is a lot of water damage, but they do plan to rebuild and be better than ever. And they do have insurance, but they are planning to do some fundraisers to cover what insurance does not pay for. <laughs> uh -huh. Blessed insurance, all state is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of payouts divine. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, oh well, no, we're we're of the Lord. We we have the right religion and everything. Okay, then what separates you from Buddhists or Catholics or Muslims or whatever that do the same thing, like this? Insurance policies to cover for acts of God. Yeah, but here's an extra interesting one here. Pastor struck by lightning, not just the Babel building, but the pastor. What's this one? Now tonight, a CBS 42 special report is 47 people die from lightning each year, hundreds more injured. That's according to the National Weather Service. This week, we are making sure that you're prepared for the potential of severe weather. CBS 42 Storm Team meteorologist Sarah Canty spoke with a local pastor who was hit by lightning. And Sarah, he lived to tell a story. That's right, Sherry. And one thing that not many people think about is lightning often strikes outside of the area of heaviest rain. And that is something one local pastor learned the hard way. Just had locked the door and set the alarm. And I'll... Ricky Adams was locking up Argo Church of God when lightning struck. Intense, intense rain, intense lightning. And the thing about it was when the lightning strike happened, it had basically passed. I mean, you know, it would just like that, it quit raining. This, this is the power pole that the lightning struck here. And it ran the power lines, the cable line into the church. Through the wiring and likely through the metal door handle, Adams had a firm grasp on. I think I did go into shock. I'm standing there and I'm, I'm trying to figure out, okay, I think I just struck, got struck by lightning because it literally felt like I had jumped on top of a live electrical line. Adam said he was shaken but had no signs of any injuries. But a short time later, he had to spend time in the hospital sick and weak. I know I was just so thankful that the Lord had taken care of me and saw me through that time. A matter of fact, the Sunday that I was struck by lightning, I preached that morning on we have an anchor, steadfast and sure, a hope. It took him weeks to get back to the pulpit and sitting outside of the Argo Church of God, a memorial, another reminder of severe weather's impact on this community. The names of the nine Walker County residents who died in the April 27, 2011 EF4 tornado. Two killed directly across the street. The tornado's path continued through the church. Completely destroyed the fellowship hall, completely destroyed the parsonage, heavily damaged the sanctuary part of the church. We had to rebuild. And, you know, it was a, it was a pretty tra traumatic experience when I first found out about that. But, you know, God was faithful to us through that, too. We ended up, you know, rebuilding and having a nicer building than we had before. Adam's faith. And again, uh, how did you rebuild? Did God provide the money or did the insurance company provide the money? And what if he, God was actually trying to get their attention with the hurricane? So they never even asked these questions. Let's continue.
Tested, but not destroyed after multiple run-ins with Mother Nature. I feel blessed. It's, that's what I do. I feel mighty blessed uh, by the Lord. And just as you heard Adams talk about the rain had really slacked off, and that's why everyone was outside and thought the storm had passed when this happened. It's an important lesson that you should always wait 30 minutes to go outside after you hear the last thunder. Sherry. All right. And then another one here, not a church building, but uh, right, right beside one. Good one here. Here we go. I think it's fair to say this morning the talk of the tri-state is going to be about the shocking destruction of a local landmark. It burned to the ground last night thanks to lightning. News 5's Andrew Setters is live with more on Mobile 5 from Monroe. Andrew, good morning to you. Boy, daylight tells the story. Absolutely, Lisa. Whether you drive past the King of Kings statue in Monroe and just kind of marvel at the scope of it, or whether you drive past it, use it as a reminder of your faith from day to day. People definitely know the statue that some call the Touchdown Jesus here in Monroe, right on I-5. It was destroyed by fire last night. Let's take a look at the statue before all this began, and then show you some YouTube video of it during the blaze that happened last night. Just after 11 o'clock last night, it's believed that lightning struck the statue and caused it to just be devastated. All the styrofoam and fiberglass that covered the metal skeleton of the statue burned away in the blaze, a very bright, amazing blaze that uh, happened out here last night. All that's left today, the steel skeleton, the structure that supported that statue here at the Solid Rock Church in Monroe. And as people drive past this morning, they have uh, many of them been slowing down to take a look. It is uh, such an iconic landmark here in the tri-state, something that's just popped up within the past uh, few years and really become uh, something this community is definitely known for as people drive through. Yeah, I uh, thought that would be a graven image, disobeying, disobeying the uh, Ten Commandments, putting up that satanic thing. But uh, so there you have it. It's not just one church building that's been hit by lightning and burned to the ground. It's multiple church buildings. And if you don't understand the church whole issue, then here's an interesting one that you can watch that I did a number of years ago, four years ago. Church buildings are for teaching lost people religious things. Um, Lord gave me that title, and it's very true. Uh, that's what they do. Um, so I'll leave a few other links here at the end of this video to other things on the church issue. Uh, I su suggest you study it, and if you're going to a church building, I'd recommend getting out of it and actually returning to the New Testament way of doing things. And um, we need to be more strict in the body of Christ with who we accept as Christians. There's a lot of uh, huge amounts of false converts within the ranks of professing Christianity, and it's because of church buildings. Um, and nobody can really argue with that if you're you know, truly being logical, because uh, church buildings are for teaching lost people religious things. They invite the lost in. Uh, that's not a New Testament practice. It is not there. Um, and people say, oh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Hebrews chapter 10, verse uh, 26, I think it is. Um, yeah, let me show you the verse here real quickly as before we close this. I get that thing all the time from church building people. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. They don't even realize what they're saying. Sorry, no, verse 25. I was trying to think 25 or 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The assembling of who? Ourselves together. Not saved and lost. Important distinction there. The body of Christ is supposed to meet together apart from the lost world. You don't invite the lost world in. So you have to study this issue more if you don't understand the church building issue and why church buildings are wrong, why they were not in the New Testament, and why you should not go near those places. So um, just an interesting video. thought I'd put that out just to, again, make people aware of the whole church building issue, what's really going on there, what the scriptures have to say against that whole practice. You go to some special place to worship God, and then the rest of the week you get to live like the world. That's what church buildings are. So that is going to be it. Please do study this issue uh, more in depth according to the scriptures. Thank you for watching.